This camel's system is so adaptive it can travel 50 miles in desert heat without taking fluid, making it one of the world's most dependable animals. This automobile system is so adaptive that if necessary for your safety, it is engineered to travel 50 miles in desert heat without a single drop of coolant, which might also tell you something about its dependability. The Seville STS with a North Star system by Cadillac, changing the way you think about American automobiles. Ted Danson, Howie Mandel, a fine mess, Friday night at 12. Action News, Delaware Valley's leading news program with Gary Papa, Dave Roberts, and Jim Gardner. Thursday night, a local college pays a last tribute to a student leader, and the mayor of Wilmington, Delaware, asks for a tax hike. But the big story in Action News tonight is an unseemly legacy of the blizzard of 93. It is the blizzard backup of 93, a backup of trash. And residents of one neighborhood say they have had enough. After almost two weeks of no trash pickup, residents in the 2000 block of Cambria finally had enough and dumped their trash out in the middle of the street. They were scheduled last week, of course, with the snow. I, I realize, you know, why they didn't do it. But today was trash day around here, and they didn't come. Cars struggled to get past boxes and bags of trash, while SEPTA buses had to detour through neighboring streets. But residents say... Well, we got to keep that over there until they pick up the trash for us. Indeed, there were many other streets across town that have not had trash pickups since the blizzard that paralyzed the city almost two weeks ago. Because of snow accumulation on the streets, the city said last week it would be running a little behind on trash pickups. We would like to know if Randell's trash was picked up. Mayor Randell's? Yes. We went to the mayor's house in East Falls, and it appeared his trash had been picked up. In fact, we went all up and down the neighborhood here in East Falls and discovered that all of the trash had been picked up since the blizzard. Have you had your trash picked up since the blizzard? Yeah, we have. It has been picked up? Yeah, it has. So you haven't had any problems with the trash uh, pickup? A streets department official tonight refused to comment on the disparity in trash pickups, but meantime, back in Kensington... I made us out. With trash trucks sitting idle for the night, the streets department says the backup has caused a 50% increase in trash volume, creating more delays. But a spokesman says they expect to fully catch up by Saturday. However, late tonight, a trash truck was sent out to pick up all the trash that had been dumped on the 2000 block of Cambria. I'm Dan Quayette, Channel 6 Action News, Kensington. A judge could get the case tomorrow in the Myla Friedman murder trial. Lawyers for both sides deliver their closing arguments today. Friedman's lawyer said she killed her married lover, Brian Edwards, in self-defense. But the prosecution argued that Friedman concocted the story. She claims she killed Edwards after he raped her and scarred her chest with a steak knife. The state says she killed Edwards because he was ready to leave her for his wife in Texas. Closing statements conclude tomorrow, and then the fate of Myla Friedman will rest with the judge. A federal jury in Camden has found Earl Richmond guilty of murdering Fort Dix payroll clerk Lisa Ann Nadeau. Richmond, the man with his hands to his face, was a drill sergeant at Fort Dix. Nadeau was found beaten and strangled at her townhouse on the base in April of 1991. Richmond faces life in prison without parole, but he must also face three counts of murder in North Carolina. The controversy over police sergeant Anthony Braston sparked competing demonstrations in Philadelphia today. In Center City, a couple of hundred people staged a march at City Hall. They complained that the criminal justice system discriminates against minorities. Braston will stand trial on reduced charges in the death of Charles Matthews. In Mayfair, another demonstration took place in support of the police. City Councilwoman Joan Krajewski proclaimed that the police department has the support of all law-abiding citizens. It is a major defeat tonight for... I think I've got the wrong story. Let's go to this one. In Philadelphia's Chinatown tonight, a major protest. Residents don't want the federal government to build a prison in this community's backyard. Action News reporter John Rollins has the full story. A rare sight. Asian Americans taking to the streets of Chinatown in protest. No prison no At issue, the possibility the federal government might build a 750-bed prison on one of two vacant lots on Callahill Street. The sites are several blocks from the heart of Chinatown, but only yards from the community's Holy Redeemer Church and School. At a hearing tonight, federal prison officials got an earful as community leaders told them a prison next to their school is an insult. Parents have said that they will not permit their children to go to Holy Redeemer if the prison is built on Callahill Street. 
New generation detention centers built in other cities resemble office buildings. Federal officials have said such lockups can be good neighbors, but protesters were having none of it. Alarm residents say this is much more than a not in my backyard argument, that to build a large scale prison north of here would strangle a century old ethnic community. Critics claim government-backed projects have blocked the expansion of Chinatown. To the south, the gallery. To the east, the PAB. And to the west, the convention center. A prison to the north would be the last straw. If we have to lay down in front of the bulldozers, we will stop this prison from being built. Officials had originally wanted to build the prison near the Afro-American Museum at 7th and Arch, but stiff opposition by African Americans prompted them to look elsewhere. Tonight, Asian American groups vowed to force prison officials to keep on looking. John Rollins, Channel 6, Action News. Now, it is a major defeat tonight for Amish and Mennonite farmers in their fight against a major development in Earl Township, Lancaster County. Tonight, the Board of Supervisors in Earl Township voted 3 to nothing to approve the rezoning of a farm for development of a 600-bed retirement village. And this is the farmland in question. The owner of the land has agreed to sell it to the developer. The decision tonight may also lead to construction of a sewage treatment plant that could open the entire valley to development. Said one Amish woman tonight, we're being forced out. When will it stop? The mayor of Wilmington tonight is asking for a tax increase to help his city out of a fiscal crunch. Mayor James Sills, giving his first budget address tonight, says the city will have a $3 million deficit at the end of the fiscal year. He called tonight for a 9.6% increase in the real estate tax and a 9.75% hike in water and sewer rates. Sills also said he was canceling travel plans for city officials, eliminating all non-essential overtime and continuing a hiring freeze. If we are asking more of our citizens, then our citizens have a right to ask us to be more accountable for the use of their tax dollars. Sill says the tax and rate hikes will cost the average homeowner about $60 more a year. President Clinton's economic plan has overcome another hurdle in the Congress. The Senate today approved an outline of the Clinton program. The vote was basically along party lines, 54 to 45, and it came with record speed. Democratic leaders then sent the Senate into debate on Clinton's $16 billion stimulus program. This will be more difficult than the vote today because conservative Democrats have joined Republicans in lining up against the spending plan. But Clinton and Gore were buoyant after the vote today when they called Senate Democratic leaders from the White House. I believe, and I think the American people believe, that this is really a historic moment. We've, finally, we've done something to break the gridlock and to bring the deficit down and to create new jobs through investment. It's a remarkable achievement. But on the floor today, Senate Republican leader Bob Dole warned of tougher days ahead for the White House. He said, quote, we start shooting the real bullets from here on. He said, this is a big mistake we have just made. Maybe there's time enough to rectify it. Democrats and Republicans in Congress continue to do battle over the abortion issue. Democrats defeated an attempt to require parental notification for minors who want abortions at federally funded clinics. Then the Democrats voted to permanently do away with government restrictions on abortion counseling. New Jersey Senator Frank Lautenberg today launched a full-scale effort to crack down on assault weapons. Lautenberg said he is introducing a bill that would ban the manufacture of assault weapons nationwide. But the bill would not require people to get rid of assault weapons they already own. Russian President Boris Yeltsin seems to be winning the battle against his hardline enemies in the parliament. Yeltsin went on television today to accuse his rivals in the parliament have tried to remove him by going behind the backs of the Russian people. And he renewed his call for a national referendum. An opinion poll released in Moscow today showed that most Muscovites believe Yeltsin will win the power struggle. Meanwhile, Yeltsin's chief opponent, Ruslan, uh, Ruslan Kabatilov, also went on television today, and his appearance served to defuse the crisis. Kozbolatov backed away from his demands that Yeltsin be impeached. At the United Nations, they are calling it a breakthrough in efforts to end the ethnic warfare in Bosnia. The Bosnian president, Alia Izetbegovic, approved key points of a peace plan today. The plan would divide Bosnia into 10 semi-autonomous provinces. And he also accepted an agreement on arrangements for interim governing. The plan has already been accepted by the Bosnian Croat leader, but the Bosnian Serb leader, Radovan Karadzic, is the only holdout now. The FBI says it has arrested a fifth suspect in the World Trade Center bombing. 27-year-old Bilal al qaizi of Brooklyn was arrested after he surrendered last night for questioning. Officials say the arrest may leave 
only one suspect still at large. Meanwhile, three other suspects were arraigned today in federal court in New York and all pleaded not guilty. Nidal Ayad told the judge, I am not guilty, I swear by all I hold dear, the Quran, my wife, child, and mother. Mohammed Salama screamed to the judge, I am not guilty. In a separate arraignment, the alleged mastermind, Mahmoud Abu Halima, he was ordered held without bail and he did not speak during the hearing. His attorney today said that Abu Halima was tortured for 10 days while in custody in Egypt. Quoting the attorney, they held him on a board like a shish kebab. As many as seven people have been shot along a rural highway in Washington state. It happened tonight 30 miles southeast of Seattle. Authorities say a man armed with a 22 caliber Ruger rifle began firing at motorists. Authorities returned fire, wounding the gunman. He is in critical condition. There is no word on why he did this. An early morning earthquake caused serious damage at the state capital of Oregon today. The earthquake, which registered 5.7 on the Richter scale, also buckled an expressway bridge, but caused only minor injuries. And that is fortunate, considering the quake caused the partial collapse of the walls at a high school in Molala. Luckily, public schools are closed across the state because of spring break. The tumbler was felt as far away as Seattle, Washington. Still to come on Action News tonight, a Pennsylvania man has a big payday in Florida. And what weighs 300 pounds and takes 72 hours to cook? We'll let you know. Is there a possibility that we could actually see some sunshine come tomorrow? We'll find out from AccuWeather. And Rob Jennings has a Crime Fighters report, and we'll have more when Action News continues tonight. comes a car with true German engineering that not only celebrates the joy of handling a curve, but the wisdom of handling a budget. The new Fox from Volkswagen. Aren't you the sly one? Now, at special lease rates at your Volkswagen retailer. Hello, I'm Monica Melpath. And I'm Rick Williams. Tomorrow on Action News at 6 a.m., how the gloomy weather can really affect you. And a visit to the home of Camden's most famous son. Watch Action News tomorrow at 6 a.m. for the latest news, traffic, and weather. This is Carrie. She's 10 months old. When she gets sick, it's bad enough. But how, how do I get her medicine? I certainly can't leave her alone. Do I bundle her up and take her outside? What am I supposed to do? I've always gone to thrift for prescriptions, all for lots of things. And now they deliver, free. When that car pulls up outside, and we're inside, I can't tell you how good that feels. Would you not throw the toys? Do you feel like they have the control and you don't? Oh, they do, definitely. My two and a half year old rules the roost. If you don't want to spank your kids, but you don't know what else to do, watch the next Oprah. Tomorrow at four, only on Channel 6. Every guy I've ever known thinks he knows everything about cars and everything about the 69 Mep. They walk around the car and lift up the hood and say, this is where the engine is and this is where the oil goes. What would I do without him? Well, guess what? This is what I did. I bought this car, the new Subaru Impreza with a horizontally opposed engine and ABS brakes. And after I explain to him exactly what that means, I say, the 69 Mep, the Cubs joke. Yes, they did. Mia Farrow had her first chance to testify today in her child custody battle with Woody Allen. Farrow told the court that she always felt uneasy about the way Allen played with their adopted daughter, Dylan. She is the one Allen was accused of molesting. Authorities in Connecticut cleared Allen of those charges. Farrow also testified that Allen's affair with her adopted daughter, Suni, began when she was in high school and not in college, as Woody Allen has claimed. A cab company is offering a reward tonight for information about the murder of its night manager. Here is Rob Jennings with tonight's Crime Fighters report. It happened on Saturday, January 23rd in South Philadelphia's Gray's Ferry section. The crime was robbery and murder. The victim was 42-year-old Angelo Freni, who battled back from a tough life to become night manager for Premium Sedan, the company which owns Yellow Cab. Angelo would do favors for you and never, never ask for anything in return, ever. Angelo was going to deposit driver's fares when he left the company office on Grays Ferry Avenue around 10.30 that Saturday night. He was met by a gunman as he walked down these steps. And what we feel happened is as he's coming down the steps, there's possibly somebody back here and he's shot in the right side of the head. It's a close contact wound. The killer claimed Angelo Freni's life for a white canvas bag containing nearly $3,000. If anybody knew him on a personal level, uh, 
they wouldn't have done this to him. Maybe the killer didn't know Angelo Frenny. Maybe he did. Although there was only one gunman, police believe more people may have been involved in the actual plot to kill Angelo Frenny. People who knew he carried a lot of cash, people who knew where he worked, and when he would be most vulnerable. Perhaps someone got a look at the killer running from the cab yard that night. Give us the information, let us take it from there. The cab company has posted a $5,000 reward with the Citizens Crime Commission for information leading to the arrest of Angelo Frenny's killer. You can tell what you know without giving your name and claim the reward with a secret code number. Just call 546-TIPS if you can help solve this case. Rob Jennings, Channel 6 Action News. A memorial service was held tonight for the senior class president at Ursinus College. Hundreds of people crowded into the Bomberger Memorial Hall to remember 21-year-old Teresa Urban. She died on Monday. Miss Urban had told friends she felt ill. She was later found dead in her dorm room. An autopsy failed to reveal a cause of death. Additional test results are expected in the next couple of weeks. From Walt Disney Pictures. You're going to end up in the bad place with the devil himself. That'd be just fine by me. They called him a troublemaker. Come on, Vince! They called him a liar. My ma ran off with a circus clown. My pa got run over by an elephant. This boy's going to fit right in. But everything in his life would change. <laughs> when one man called him friend. Best friend I ever had. True blue hook fan. That's the boy with that runaway slave. Come on! They're being swept along on an extraordinary journey, searching for one man's freedom. All men should be free. The man on raft, is he white or black? He's white. Personally, I think he's just a damn good liar. Oh, thank you for the compliment, sir. <laughs> it's the great American classic, Mark Twain's timeless epic. You're a good man, Jim. About a boy with the courage to follow his heart. Oh. Out. And the river that would lead him on an unforgettable adventure. Go for the glory, Huck! Walt Disney Pictures presents the adventures of Huck Finn. You're the best friend I ever had, Jim. Rated PG. Starts Friday, April 2nd at a theater near you. Before we could map out how far the Seville STS would go before its first scheduled tune-up, we first had to create a new map, big enough to chart the durability of Cadillac's North Star V8, a map that spans 100,000 miles, or the equivalent of four trips around the world. The Seville STS with the North Star system by Cadillac. Changing the way you think about American automobiles, 100,000 miles at a time. They held a town meeting tonight to discuss jobs of the future for members of Philadelphia's African-American community. The Workforce 2000 Advisory Council held a symposium titled The African-American Male Moving Toward the 21st Century. City Councilwoman Marion Tasco and former Mayor Wilson Good joined other leaders in discussing ways to improve education, training, and employment options for African-American males. Some South Jersey youngsters were honored tonight for raising money to support the Southern New Jersey Regional Hospital. The students are from the gifted and talented programs at Chews and Glendora Elementary Schools. In their honor, officials established the Acorn Club and unveiled a plaque to the students in the lobby of Cooper Hospital. NCAA basketball back in action tonight. Here's Gary Pop. How about this for a name? Cyphus Bunton. Who is this guy? Overtime in the southeast Florida State, up by three over Western Kentucky. This is the scene after a near steal. Western Kentucky will get a shot. It's going to be Cyphus Bunton. Could he win or tie the game tonight? And here's a three attempt at the buzzer. Oh! oh. A double O. Florida State survives. The excitement of NCAA basketball. 81-78. Also tonight, Indiana wins at 82 to 69. Look at that score. Kansas over California. And how about this one? Kentucky is crushing Wake Forest 53-26. That is late in the first. Meanwhile, the Temple, they have to wait 24 hours for their game tomorrow. But Vic Carstarpin says he will wait gladly because he has been waiting since he broke his leg back in December. Scott Palmer talked tonight to Vic Carstarpin. Teams been battling all year, so I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to do whatever I can for them, you know. They've been through a lot of adversity, and they've really stepped up to the challenge. In 1991, Vic Carstarpin led Temple all the way to the final eight. 
this year he leads a young basketball team. He's a veteran. He's been there before, and we know we just look up to him and uh, and listen to him. He, he, he must like a coach. I don't think that he's ever forgotten uh, a, a tradition that we have here, and that's the kind of thing that he's been trying to convey to the guys. It's a certain way you, mindset you have to have when you get into the NCAA tournament. It's just one and done season, and uh, you have to be mentally prepared on and off the court. Vic Karstarfen has not let a broken leg keep him from closing out his Temple career on the court. And before this weekend is over, he'd like to break the hearts of two more Temple opponents. I'm Scott Palmer, Channel 6 Action News with the Temple Owls in Seattle. And heartbroken tonight, Division II play Textile has just lost to Wayne State, 78 to 76. Reggie White, who won the Wanamaker Award today, is the top local athlete. But Reggie knows that he's not going to be here much longer. So when he received a, a standing ovation today, Reggie, who is a mountain of a man, broke down. He said afterwards, San Francisco is number one on my list. But he'll never forget the city of Philadelphia. Also, Dave, a motion the Cleveland Indians return to playing actual baseball games. And watching the action today, here is Patty Olin, the wife of pitcher Steve, who died on Monday, along with pitcher Tim Cruz, in that boating accident. And Patty says, as she's watching the ball game today, if you happen to see me these next couple of days, give me a hug. I need one. I just want to tell everybody back there how much I appreciate everything. And, and if I could, I'd give each and every one a hug. And, and if I'm there, please don't you see me. Don't be afraid to come up and give me a hug. I can always use them. Also today, one player who survived the crash is Bobby Ojeda, released today from an Orlando hospital. Despite those head injuries, he is expected to make a full recovery. Flyers, the question for Eric Lindros, he is red hot these days. He knows the way against San Jose. Here's number 88, cruising on in, making it now six straight games that he scored a goal around the referee and that away. Flyers win it five to two. Eric also had a couple of fights tonight at the Spectrum. Right hand, and that's the way it goes. Also on the scoreboard, we got Pittsburgh winning 4-3. Washington wins by the margin of five to two, and that's sports for tonight. Thank you, sir. Okay. Philadelphia Police Department is exploring new heights tonight. Action News was at Penn's Landing as officials examined a helicopter. Officials say there are no immediate plans to purchase one right now and that they are just trying to keep up with the latest technology. This helicopter has infrared equipment, which means you can see at night. It was also used to assist in a drug raid in South Philadelphia tonight. They used it for real police work tonight. Several large cities like Los Angeles used choppers as an eye in the sky to help keep the peace. The Mercedes-Benz 300E claims to go from 0 to 60 in 8 seconds. The Lexus LS400 says 0 to 60 is a mere 7.9 seconds. And the BMW 535i publishes a top speed of over 140 miles per hour. But based on those numbers, the Seville STS with the North Star system blows them all away. The Seville STS by Cadillac. Sun-kissed oranges, touched by the sun, and enjoyed by everyone under it. Sun-kissed. You have our word on it. With available all-wheel drive, and a 195 horsepower, 16-valve turbocharged engine. The Eagle Talon TSI is an incredibly advanced form of amusement. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your key state's Jeep and Eagle dealer. It's tough to keep ahead of the competition. You gotta move fast to stay on top. You need two-day two priority mail. In two. two days, we deliver two, two pounds for only two. $2.90. If the competition's new rates are just two. too much, visit your post office to send two-day priority mail or call 1-800-THE-USPS for your free starter kit. We deliver for you. Check out the Honda Civic DX. Check out the Chevy Cavalier VL for $1,800 less. But Honda has a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty. So does Cavalier. Front-wheel drive, same here. 
fuel injection? Likewise. And Cavalier has anti-lock brakes and more horsepower for $1,800 less. But you'll own a Honda. But for $1,800 more? It's your choice, America. Your local Chevy Geo dealers think it's time to rethink your values. <laughs> Tonight's Pick 6 Lotto drawing in New Jersey was worth $19.5 million. A steady stream of people lined up throughout the day to buy tickets for the multi-million dollar prize. The numbers were drawn at 8 o'clock tonight, so check your tickets to see if you are the state's newest millionaire. Here are the numbers. 30, 44, 7, 9, 6, and 25. The Johnstown, Pennsylvania man who struck it rich in Florida's lotto game arrived at the state's lottery office in grand style today. He had three, uh, one of the three winning tickets in the $86 million lottery. The unemployed steelworker plans to buy a second home in Daytona Beach and share his wealth with his family. Here's Dave Roberts. <laughs> What's the matter? I know. And the AccuWeather forecast, David. Well, things are changing a little bit tonight. Let's quickly go to the satellite picture. What we showed you up and down the East Coast, that cloud cover, if you look closely, things are clear just a little bit. Let's go a little closer on the satellite, same view, only closer. Yes, there is some clearing here in the Delaware Valley. Winds out of the north, pushing that cloud cover away from us. Now, can that hold up come tomorrow? Well, AccuWeather is saying because that high-pressure system is sagging just a little bit more to the south, we may get a little sunshine come tomorrow. However, the winds are supposed to switch back to the northeast tomorrow. Some of that easterly flow would just bring the cloud cover back. So it's a tricky call. 41 in Boston, cloud cover 55. Raleigh-Durham, cloud cover. Rain in Miami, 78 degrees. Those two high-pressure systems, hopefully, over the next couple of days, will bring us a little sunshine. That storm center down there for the weekend, heading in our direction, could possibly bring us some rain. Here's the call from AccuWeather. Weather. Yes, possible rays tomorrow. Look for your sunglasses. 30 in the Poconos, 37 in Allentown. Our low is 40 degrees. Our high, 52. Wasn't it pleasant at 3.39 this afternoon? 11 o'clock numbers show present temperature reading of 47 degrees. Still plenty of snow left in Melville, isn't there? Relative humidity, 73%. A steady barometer, 30.24. Yankee breeze, 5 miles an hour. Ocean water temperature up to 39. 47 is the number with the exception of the northeast and outside the station on City Avenue. The exclusive Accu with a five-day forecast, partly cloudy tonight, 35 to 40. Some sun is possible for rush hour in the morning. That would be nice, 42 degrees. We're up to 58, so warmer weather come tomorrow. We're going to post some sunshine. The same for Saturday, 58 degrees. Then on Sunday, storm center coming in, bringing the possibility of some rain. More cloud cover, 56. It holds for Monday. And then on Tuesday, some sun, 58 degrees. So we have hopes tonight for some rays. Come tomorrow, Jim. Thank you, David. Finally tonight, a company in Connecticut is proving its top dog when it comes to creating sausage. The Grote and Weigel Meat Company unveiled this giant kielbasa. It weighs over 2,000 pounds. It is 85 feet long, and it took 72 hours to cook. Chunks of the record-sized kielbasa will be sold off tomorrow. 300 pounds of it will be given to area soup kitchens. Nightline next on Channel 6. Action News continues at 6 a.m. with Monica Malpass, Rick Williams, and Dave Frankel. Now for Dave Roberts, Gary Papa, the entire Action News team, I'm Jim Gardner. Have a good night tonight.